Nuke and Jax may mean that Nuke, a map that requires a lot of synergy, a lot of time, could be difficult for G2. Getting underway, we do see G2 opting into that CT side and the buyout for Mouse Sports is going to see Rops down to a P250. He has bought his own this time. Utility behind that and Carrigan, he's gone all in with a nade, a smoke and a flash. G2 have got five sets of Kevlar, so happy to take the fights on this. They're actually operating with T2 decoys as well. No kit. Squeaky's blown open and they're straight into top. Yeah, they've got so much space here. Nice call. Bomb's not to be planted just yet. That's Frozen working on that now. And he disappears off into the hut. So Lobby held. Rops shows his face and takes Jax out. This is a great start for Mouse and they'll flash off and go. It's not even a flash, it's a decoy, but it will turn the players all the same. They're holding it from Hurt. The frags favor Bemis, Chris J, Mouse spots in general. All of the frags go in their way. They're low, but it's only Nico. Rob's playing the safe game. He's even working on the flank should he need to. And that is enough. Easy. Good work here from Mouse Sports to kick things off in style. Riding the high of that map win of Dust2. Stealing that away from G2, not letting being netted up in two. And Nico. Couple of shots exchanged with Rops. They're both more than happy to survive. Nico carries that Kevlar across into the next round for the likely G2 force buy. I think what would be an interesting way to deal with that dynamic of Kenny and Nico towards Yard is to constantly play these rotations. So try and get a man down the vent as often as you can and see just how much scrutiny that puts G2's rotations under. That might be a key from Mouse Sports. And we know that Rops has a couple of little tricks. He likes to poke his head out. Yeah, I mean, look, they've, they've set him up for success again. He's just gets to rock a full AK-47 into round two. And he works ramp very, very clinically. They're going for the Yard smokes. Bit of a gap. gap. And Nico confirms that there's one across. Much more where that came from. You got one bullet left in that deagle. You want to use those carefully, sir. They get across. Nico's speculative shots have connected nothing. And now Mouse Sports descending towards the lower site, or at least taking this much control. Hunter in the vents. They've got three players down here already. This is going to be carnage one way or another. Yeah, I mean, a pivot top site would be the a dream call. Kenny has another smoke on the lower bomb side as well, so they can really bottleneck Mouse Sports in towards Secret if he drops that now. Not opting to do so. He's actually going to be mollied out of position, so he has to extinguish, and that doesn't help them. I thought he hit that. Kenny sticking around. It forces an aid out of them, a minimum. Good oh. damage inflicted. Oh, Carrigan, he's about to have a field day with his SMG. Shut down by Kenny. Now, four versus three. 50 seconds. Where's the bomb going now? Bemis and Chris J, the ones to make the decision. He's Vent looking at vents. It's a vent to top take, perhaps. No one has the info. Chris is trying to take the bomb up secret. Yeah, it will be the top finish. Nico is on heaven, Nexa on hearts. He'll have a powerful position to deny this as they head from main. Nico spotting them, spots the bomb as well. It's basically oh. confirmation. He even re-peeks into Rops. That was the AK. Nexa, perfect. Just needs Bemis now, and he's on main already found. They've got the numbers. they got the round here. The flash is good, but... Taking a bit of flack already. Kenny goes down. They're up the vents. Bemis just looking for survival here. And Nico denies that. He'll grab his whatever he can find. It's an AK there. One main for a Galil. And even scavenging an MP7. That dream for G2 of a second round conversion there. Really quite strange that that smoke of Kenny actually drew them towards the window side. I thought once you see the CTs drop a smoke like that, grab the other territory and see what you can do. But they were actually able to make that one work. So, poof. Flustered scenes for Mouse Sports in the early stages, and they want to bounce back with a force buy of their own. Deagle, CZ, Scout for Chris J. Let's see if they can take it to G2. Nico postured up with that AK-47, of course. Might have a couple of one-taps on the cards here. Eight smokes, they get across. It's just the one parking Carrigan into that lower site. Good shooting. Nico taps at the unawares frozen. He even confirms the Bemis hunting for action yard. Nico very well to stand his ground and actually take another before the Chris J scout could connect. It makes it all the more difficult for Chris. Yeah, Carrigan went down with the secret control as well. So G2 have this well handled. The force by a mouse falling flat. Kenny would have to offer his life up here. Doesn't need to keep moving. He'll get Robs walking into his crosshair. It's a perfect park now. He can just chill. 
Chris likely will be pre-aiming this, but it was a duel that favors the Kenny S, especially now that Robs has gone down and has Kenny's frag. So all done and indeed dusted. A bit of scavenging going down, but no one finding an upgrade. G2 convert against the Force Buy. It will be the Eco now for Mouse to put three on the board. Okay, so that one there, you can just see what we're talking about with the presence in Nico towards Yard. It was only two kills, but he completely stifled any room that they wanted to take before it got out of control. He didn't let them get to Warehouse. He didn't let them play with the control of Yard. And Hunter picking up Carrigan on his descent down towards Lower was huge as well. So as we get this underway, I think this one might be a bit of a clean sweep. Rush, who'd you predict for this one, mate? I predicted Mouse Sports for this one. Okay, I think uh, Alex and I did the same. Yeah, well, let's see how it's going to go. It looks a bit dicey here with the pistols. The clock's only, Chad. You don't want to see this. You but never oh. want to see it. But look, Carrigan is down lower. The Observer will switch to him now as he might get a plan. And Rops also got one here as well, so it's looking dicey. The it's timing. Like yeah, Rops could do Rops. something with that. There you go. There you go. All right, well, good plant and good pointing out there, Rush. Good looking out. Hope you're keeping well in the Observer room. Hope they're feeding you. Hope they're watering you. Yeah, it's pretty good down here. I like it. It's crazy how there's a basement like 10 floors under the ESL studio that they lock him in every night. That elevator takes forever. Yeah, that one's a bit archaic, but uh, let's focus here because G2, they're up against the buy now as Chris did a good job alongside a BMS there to get at least one kill with the Glocks, the bomb going down and another frag onto Hunter there is a, a decent eco. It was just Glocks, so you're really happy with that yeah, one, actually. You take those, you take a plan, you take an extra 800 bucks each means everyone gets everything they desire, plus change. Change on the menu for Mouse as well. The hut for Carrigan taking a glance. Next up, set up on the rafters nicely. They will potentially mop ah, him out. I like that. They know that Rops likes to play sneaky beaky around that vent smoke, so they're just spamming through, seeing if they can do any damage, but it is set up for a top hit. Yeah, he's going to be mollied off the hut. No one's there. Next up, not burning. He can do damage from here, a lot of it, and Hunter stops them initially. Hoping not to be checked, but Bemis very thorough. Oh, Bemis. what an adjustment. The pre-fire through the smoke. Nico loses his head. Bemis taking this round. It's three kills for the new addition to Mouse. And wow, that's enough to cause Kenny to save immediately. Jax is heading to ramp to find safety. That's just giving me flashbacks, Alex. I think the first few times we saw Bemis in this roster after Woxic was put on the bench and released from the team, we did see on this exact map him being sent in as the entry piece and doing similar fragging duties as that, just mopping them up into the site. You know the execute's good, and I believe at the time we spoke about it, he was in phase, a team where he wasn't given the roles that he wanted. He was only a stand-in over there, and now he's been used by Carrigan, obviously someone who gets the experience of rebuilding teams, using players to their absolute best, and just throwing in this youngster with mechanical brilliance, with a fantastically well-drilled execute behind it and going, go kill. And he does exactly that here. All of them, including that. It was just a couple of tracer shots, maybe the call as well, but dreamy from Bemis. That's a 3K that wins the round and Carrigan doesn't have to do much more. Mission accomplished, closing the gap, 3-2. Final map first, game of the day. Want to join over on the fan cams? I recommend it, im.gg slash fan cam if you want to join. I miss having crowds, dude. What's Kenny up to? Has he timed out? Yeah, he's timed out. Oh. Uh, they're calling this one off, maybe. I'm not sure if they'll continue because damage, damage has already has been done. Been inflicted. Look like Kenny's back in the server now, but maybe just an alt tab, maybe a bit of lag right there. Regardless, that's going to be an awkward one because I think G2 would have been calling for it, and they're the ones to find the opening frag. So we'll just play to the whistle here. Yeah, and I, one would assume that it was Rops pushing in as well, so... Odd. Carrigan, oh, that's a great catch from Kenny. He actually wants more here, and respect, he hit that flick, but it actually does cost him his life. Chris gets tagged to 15 of a crazy wrist breaker from Kenny. Hunter taking a lot of space here as well. Yeah. Mouse would have to be very good to win this round. Especially considering that Jax is... Ooh, did he get spotted? No, he didn't. And so he can frag out both. Lovely play from Jax. Just emerges from his hidey hole. Getting himself a double. Frozen yet to frag. Some financial damage could definitely be the name of the game here. Ah. Nico, perfect. Oh. And hits the shot, keeps moving. <laughs> That's a fifth death for poor old Frozen. Jack's getting a crucial double kill as well. Now, if I'm mouse sports, I'm extremely frustrated about how that round started, but it's happened now, and I think the idea is just make sure you can shake that one off. That was the maneuver of Rops there.
We've seen that one plenty of times. Loves to limp the smoke and nade out towards Squeaky. And Hunter was ready for it. So they're prepared for the moves of Rops. And if they can negate him, he has not had a, a game where he's popped off with 30, like we've seen for them in many of the Mouse Sports victories. So if they keep Rops quiet, someone else has to feel the feed in terms of fragging out output as uh, Mouse Sports will buy again. Hellblock smokes. Kenny held at bay. Nico to play around that. Frozen. Needs to still find some impact here. And limping out top will be Carrigan. They're just going to walk in. Dexa. He hears it. He's been found. Oh, great shooting. Nexa anticipates the push. Bemis, he's still alive. He's been very good into the sights, but he has to overcome a serious man disadvantage, especially now Frozen's been found. Oof. It's only the one. The Galil just not quite the weapon for the job. G25, Mouseports 2. And timeout time. Perfect time. I think, yeah, still the ramifications being battled of just the poor scenario a little bit earlier means take your time, take a deep breath, maybe just have everybody sit there and reflect for 30 seconds. I don't think there's too much to talk through. You're only seven rounds deep in the first half here of map number three. I'm sure Carrigan's playbook isn't empty just yet. This is more about a breather, I think, as the timeout now has almost transpired. You can see the scores on the doors. That's Frozen who we're talking about with only five ADR. Carrigan with only one kill. Bemis having a lot of success on that entry towards top. I mean, he's responsible for half of their round so far. Admittedly, it sounds more dramatic than it is, but that's why <laughs> stats aren't. It's the only thing you should be looking at. Context, context is context. key. Okay, well, uh, the Kovac cousin's doing well. Eight apiece for them in this early little venture into Nuke. Kenny already has four assists. So only because I watched some Netflix show called Altered Carbon, I yes. think it's Kovac. Ah, the give Kovac. It a, give, it, give it a ch. But okay. I could be corrected on Twitter, I'm sure. I'm good at the chizzes. Yeah, so give that a whack if we want to whip out a Kovac again. I'll get confirmation from Yanko. And later, Kenny elevated on the box. Carrigan does well to scout that out without the cost of his life. He wants Yard Presence to be noted. He doesn't want the CTs flanking up fast. Maybe Frozen parked to hold the push eventually. Playing with fire. Some of those tracer shots. Of course, the M4A1 much more reliable in taking safe sprays and smokes. Houseports are just hoping that they get given something here. It is just the deco for of the five players equipped with the $700 sidearm. G2 not giving up anything. Harrigan walks out. Held by Hunter. Trying to hit the hard shot. And well, Kenny... Nexa and Hunter all respond to his walk. Yeah, just doing the standard whittle down the CT utility, keep the economy in check, and hope you can find a frag. Worst case, you get nothing. Best case, you get that bomb down and a couple of kills. He's within the 1D range now. Jack still stands his ground, though. Doesn't want to concede, and look how well he's played that. <laughs> Neat and tidy against the deco from Jack's ramp hole. Good to see. A crucial test for him passed. Yeah, they might think better of heading over towards his side of the map after a round like that. And we have seen Frozen apply for the Secret Service. 007, Mouse Sports. Absent a fragger at the moment. Coming into the next weapon round, I'm sure Frozen will be looking to shake it off. Taylor Swift would be proud. One of the keys for an individual like Frozen has been in his resurgence as an individual, some of these clutches, they need to get him into a mid-round to really see his impact. And right now, Ooh, it's aggression. control. And I love a bit of this, especially when the Orpa starts popping off on red. But he's gone a bit deeper, and that might catch Frozen off guard. He's actually heard it. He's going to molly Kenny out. Molly, molly. Yikes. Kenny's forced to smoke it. That's a lot of his damage done. 80. Health lost for Kenny. They're coming back towards Jackson ramp, and the nade's good. Very good. Good angle for the first. Is he going to stand or is he going to get pre-fired? Bemis will get him. Okay, so Mouse have got something. They've got a good part of the map. Rops parked in lobby for the push. Who's lower? It's only Kenny and he was tagged up heavy by the molly. He's holding just one door of ramp and he could catch Chris. Nice stuff from Kenny S here. Window broken. Bemis pushing. Kenny readjusting. Bomb lost on the ramp. And it's an advantage for Kenny. I don't know if you're aware, but Bemis's legs would be visible before Bemis got any info. Yeah, he thinks better of that, Jewel. But they don't have a smoke for the door. They don't have a Molotov for the stairwell. And they've got 37 seconds remaining. But it would mean they'd have to bait them into a couple of fights here. Rop's just trying to show himself. 
They've thrown a flash into the door. It's closed. Nobody's home. There's the Molotov that they found in transition. So Kenny might want to pick into this. Getting the bomb down would be nice. Closing open, closing opening. Back and forth we go. Got the hey, bomb down at least. set up for success here. Maybe Bemis and Rops have got something to say. Yeah, they do. One frag at least. Bemis to clutch. He's got three to find. And if he finds Nico cleanly, he could have had a shot. He does get jeweled out by Nexa. And so it will be another. Put on the board nicely for G2. That's seven. To Mouseports two. CT side locking him down, not giving him too much room. And Kenny S gets credit as well for that frag onto Chris. That was the bomb delivered. And you can see how much money they're building now. I just saw 13 grand on Nico. Yeah, problems here for Whoa. Mouse. Just haven't got enough kills. It was competitive in the early stages, but now it feels like there's been some energy sucked out of the room. Frozen with that prowess towards Yard. He did good damage onto Kenny, but still went down to Nico, who was pushed forward as part of that Yard control. And Mousebots with the plant will be able to buy once more, but it's not great. Chris Jow is a scout. AKs for the rest of them. But at this point, with that 13k that you were talking about, would have been on the back of Kenny. He just had to reinvest in some utility. They're looking really good, G2. Secret wall smokes are out. Silent as you like as they cross behind them, but they will have to deal with Nico, who, who has already rotated towards lower. I think he's dropped his smoke. That's going to be clearing probably the next 10 or so seconds, but they've been able to get some space. Yeah, that's step one. Look at all the nades that G2 still have. And he's got Jax alongside for the ride here. This is a great timing on the push. Chris caught. Another big opening, and they actually dropped two incendiaries to stop the bomb retrieval. Hunter's even pushed into the lobby, losing his life. A bit of a risk not going his way. Kenny continues to take some, but thinking better of it as the flash pours in, he wants to contest this. Sweeping in, Tro does oh. catch a glimpse of the shoulder of Carrigan, but that's Nexa, perfect timing. They refuse to let go of the accelerator. And this pace, it's really locked them down. They still haven't been able to get that bomb. Chris is just so mad that he lost it in the freight. Finally, Rops recovers it in the smoke, but damage done. They're knocked off kilter. Into the top site. Heavy rotate lower. Nico and Jax are there. Of course, vent pivot's possible. Nexa's is still on the site. 20 seconds. Oh, that sounded good. Kenny threw the molly, hitting Frozen, and it is just Rops looking to save on that T-roof. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Mouse Sports just looking a little bit uninspired right now, and I, I don't want to dwell on it, but I really do think they've been rattled by that issue that happened earlier in the, in the half. Yeah, that one round where it was yeah. like Rops walking out. You had Kenny uh, freeze midair, right? Yeah. So I think the fact that there was just so much confusion there. But you can see this at lobby aggression. So through Hut and Ramp, and it's like barbs in either side. They continue to jab. Kenny picks, Hut picks, Kenny picks again. Hut continues to find frags. And yeah, it's just difficult to work with because lobby, it normally feels like such safe territory. You normally don't expect the CTs to aggress Ramp, even though that is becoming more and more popular with the AWP rifle combo. Good way to search for information when you do lose yard control. And Mouseports have taken their second tactical timeout here. Really need to talk through their options. Yeah, and likely just to try and clear your mind. Set the T side would be an integral component as to the victor of this one. And though they have traded map picks, Luke seems very comfortable for G2 at the moment. So what is it, 3,400 in the next for Mouse? So they're just going to partially buy here. Chris J into a scout. The others have got some upgraded armor with pistols and utility and fast smokes towards Yard again. But Rops has saved AK, needs to make something happen. Only four kills. And we mentioned within this tournament, he's been a bit of a superstar. Within the top 10 highest rated players so far. But if he goes out here with a whimper, so will Mouse Sports. They need him. And they need him now. And Frozen still yet to frag. It would be a great liberties. time. Oh, he's actually got a chance. Nico reacts, recovers. T250 takes 95% of Nico's functional health away, but he lives and has his util. Flash, ball event drop, and Hunter actually punishes on that, swinging out from the CT vent. Testing ramp now. Jax has been having a fantastic game holding this. He likes a different off angle every time. This isn't bad. Has to be precise. The spray actually finding Chris. And a quick flick from Kenny does not stop the bomb. Bemis will be looking for the plant here. Hunter's already down there. Can he stop it? Bemis planting. He can deny it. That's a huge frag. It will be Rops thrust into a one versus four that he swiftly made 
a little more manageable. Gets the catch onto Hunter. Now looking to punish the push. Nexa missing his shots, but converts eventually. We will see nine on the board for GU2. Very quick out of the gate on the CT side. Time for the full buy. Got everything they need, of course. Max lost for Mouse Sports. They have been thrown through a loop six rounds in a row for the defense. And Nico, Max money throughout. He really has not had to get rid of the AK-47. And I think the AK-47 was the thing that saved him there. If it was an M4 yeah. dink exchange, Frozen might have had a second chance to pull the trigger. So very big problems as we continue forward, watching this drought from Frozen. 0-0 zero, zero and 10 now, not even assist to his name. Carrigan's quiet as well. Big impact for him on Dust too, and he's only got two frags. There's no patterns being established as the push from Ramp comes in and Rops falls again. Kenny's found another opening. G2 are just running away with this. If Mounds are unable to post at least four or five T rounds, this might be quick as you like. The old block smokes are up. What can they do? Footsteps now being made. Kenny repositioning. Nico knows exactly what's happening. Two players locked in towards Warehouse. Fight your way out of this one. Powerful position for Nico to hold here. And Kenny in support. What's Carrigan throwing head there? That actually might be destined for the orp angle. Nice oh. find from Bemis. Takes down Nico. Crucial opening on the yard position. Jax rotates off as well. You might want to check Bemis out here. Jax has got a really good idea. And he does find the clean headshot. Down to the lower site. Hunter talking of headshots. It's dinged Carrigan, but his weapon stronger. Does find the same shot. Takes Hunter out. Three on three against the Molly. Jax. Oh no. Caught in transition. Chris has found another. Looks like Mouse Sports are set for success here. Only Nexa. He will have to open the door, so perhaps changing his plan, make change his route. Carrigan low coming in on that ramp side. Look at all the money G2 have to work with here. If I'm next, I give it a crack. I take as many down with me as I can. Has a smoke as well. So if he makes this interesting, gets a kill or two, the smoke diffuse is possible. There's a kit. Does he want to have a look in here, Nexa? He's parked up. It doesn't look like it. Happy to sit back, but Carrigan with some big impact in this one. Searching forward. <laughs> what? <laughs> he was ready for that, I guess. Carrigan waking up. That's a triple kill from the uh, in-game leader. Jesus, that was a big shot. Yeah, you take those. And, uh, well, Mousebots need to take the following three. Bit more of that. Definitely would help to see Frozen on the board, and I'm sure he's more than capable of finding form should they close this gap. But at the moment, it's just too much. Way too much. Damage inflicted. T-side has been getting more and more leniency, more teams finding more rounds on the attack of Nuke. It just hasn't really shaped up well for the Mouseboard squad. Haven't seen him go outside with the outside smokes in some time, and Nico's trying to change things up with a bit of aggression of his own. It is only the first smoke thrown. And I think actually they have deployed the full wall now. Nico will be likely be able to communicate that there's nothing there. And Kenny does pull the orb onto Carrigan's jiggle. That's the bomb. He immediately gets a molly on it. Frozen's got one as well, so he's finally on the board here. That's a big scalp with Nico. They've lost their space maker in Carrigan though, so someone else is going to have to fill that duty. Most likely Bemis to go in wide with the entries. Molotov's towards Yard as Frozen continues forward. Spam through the smoke. They at least know once towards main. Territory is taken now. Holy heaven. Yeah, it's perfect. It means that Frozen knows with certainty there's no one up there. Jax is taking lobby space. This is going to be a big round here. Comes down to Frozen's positioning. And where's the bomb finishing? Oh, if Frozen gets caught out here, he'll be in no man's land. Kenny will clear towards top heaven. Frozen's going to die. He's so paranoid about that push. Kenny likely going to have a look. And oh dear. That was, that was what they were waiting on. And just as the chaos creates, Jax finds two. That's perfect timing from G2. Just as you can see, like, okay, so if they were setting up heaven, where's the rest? Exactly. Lingering lobby. Oh, wow. They're, well, the they're, Counter-Strike definitely is a formula, and G2 definitely seem to have it solved. You look at the territory that they trade there, right? They're like, okay, well, we're going to get pressure from ladder base, from heaven. They could even clamp in from main. They took away secret. So at that point, they've just traded sides of the map and they're hiding in plain sight. They can pivot to fight either the heaven players, the flanking from ramp, or push into lobby if they need to. And G2, with that clamp, it worked perfectly. Mouse spots back against the wall here. 10 to 3 is the scoreline. The smokes will come out and they want to just hit topside. Carrigan, the in-game leader, gets an opener. Here we go. Hunter one for one. Chris J takes him out. They have the numbers on the plant. Frozen's already in main. This feels much better. The top takes can definitely work. Early frags onto Nexa and Hunter have put them into good stead. Kenny and Nico. 
forging a path for main. Frozen already finding his first frag of the round, his second in the map. Cleanly finishing off Nico. Practically won the round now, as it's just Jax. He was the ramp player. Though he does have seven thousand dollar dues. You'd think a bit of damage would be welcome. Yeah, this is just an odd one. Obviously, because they've had such a great half, it means they're operating with the lowest loss bonus possible, G2. The 1400 into the bank balance. Jax wants to drop an alt for Kenny. They want to make sure there's a gun for Nico as well. And the thing is, when you're on this knife's edge with the money, of course, mouse spots get the win bonus. But if you take away a couple more guns, it means that they won't be able to invest in such the same way. So let's see those entry frags. It was Hunter that went down to Chris J, and the rest was just the lockout. Frozen tested twice on main, and he passes both of them. That's going to be good for his confidence, and he needs a couple more of those. Going into the second half, the CT side, Frozen's going to be instrumental. You can see the mouse spot fans there. We don't see him too often, and there's good reason. They haven't won many rounds so far. <laughs> but now they've got the smiles on their faces, at least. Let's get this one started. Final round, third map of our first half. And Kenny with some aggression. Good flick. Nico found Carrigan and a second as well. They're going to finish this round right here, right now, unless Chris has one of his Chris J rounds. He's definitely capable. Rops as well. He might be walking out. I'll catch a timing here. It's held by Hunter. He's even pre-aiming the rafters. Maybe next if he peeks in, would have an advantage there. Oh, what a shot. Rops adjusts. Wants to walk in. Hunter was on CT vent. Don't forget, he spots him though. Rops can take this shot. He's no slouch, he's Rops. He's made a round out of this. Chris did go down, but Rops has managed to make space for himself. He knows that Jax plays ramp. And he silently descends the vent. Jax likely would have to follow. Is he going round the world? Rops might outplay himself. He has no idea where Jax has been in this round. Very, very silent. So the fact that he's in towards lobby, close towards squeaky, means he can pivot between both Rob bomb sites very quickly. It's personal opinion, but I would definitely have almost liked him to have made noise on the vent drop if he was going for this play. But he's continued to be so silent as he procedurally tries to solve the mystery of the missing Jax. He's going round the world heaven, clearing every possibility. Process of elimination, it must be lobby. Could be ramp. That's, of course, where he typically hides. If he goes up ladder here and then drops down behind the bomb box, he can molly hut, meaning he will be able to get the bomb down, but Jack should pin him in position and has utility of his own. This is timing now. Spots him, and Jax wins the round. Robs a huge investment of time, could not convert the final frag. A double is where he stopped, and G2, well, they're set. 11 to Mouse Sports 4.
Mouse Sports looking to dig themselves out of a very uncomfortable hole. It is elimination for the loser of G2 Mouse. And myself and Chad Burchill are hanging out here in the studio in Cologne to bring you all of the action. Representing the Vape Nation, it is 11 to 4. G2 are knocking on the door of a playoff spot. We've only got a couple of seats left at that table. Seems pretty damn set that G2 can convert this. They are going into the T side with 11 rounds. Now, winning the pistol makes this game less competitive. We see Mouse Sports win the pistol. We see them win the first gun. I start a different conversation altogether. I'm sure Chad would too. Yeah, and I think that the way that G2 have been playing in this third map, they've been the ones with their foot on the gas, taking a lot of fights, taking a lot of space. And in the face of Mouse Sports, I wouldn't be surprised to see them kicking off in style here as Jax has taken space towards Yard. Molotov towards the top side as they wanted to team out squeaky door. Down the vent they go. Fast, and they've already got one down secret too. There's so much lower access. Go on, Rops. Hit us some bangers. That's a start. Nexa loses his head, and they lose the bomb. Carrigan swinging in to punish. Kenny is under a lot of scrutiny, but Carrigan is too now. Nico closing the door behind him on Decon. Needs a clean kill. Doesn't have it. Nico makes it a 4v4. And the bomb will be going down. Kenny's going to give that a go. Chris is working down the ramp. Hunter and Jack's a late arrival from the same position. They find Frozen lurking. Oh, dear. Bemis and Rops in jeopardy now. He's got pressure from behind him. He has been hitting some good shots, but it's jiggled nicely. Hunter trades, and so Bemis, a one versus three. Hunter advancing, and so is Kenny. They will take this duel together. Hunter held at bay, but the bomb will start to slip into the site. Can't contest now. Bemis, he's held by the elevated position of Nico as well as ramp on Hunter. Not going to be easy. They'd have to give him a way in. This would be a clutch beyond his years here. This is a uh, snacks. Big Apple hungry moment. He's not going to have it at all. Nico just blows his head off and we are sorted. Oh dear. All right. Well, Mouse Sports, the balance of their game rests on this round. Do you force by? Do you go all in? Do you take it to G2? It looks like they will. Carrigan, the in-game leader, has signaled that with the Deagle Kevlar purchase. And if Mouse Sports lose this, they basically lose the game. They'll have to take the save after this. That almost guarantees the 14 for G2. Wow. Little makes socks now. Little, little branded socks. Oh, I'm gonna get some. They look fire, dude. All right. Well. Anyway, sorry. A little distracted. Let's see if this force buy works out because it is going to be a whole lot of control. Good little bunny from Kenny as well as he accelerates into ramp and well. They should just go lower here. Yeah, they've even found the opening. Rops was trying to challenge close quarters with a deagle. It's two shots to the belly. And well, that's what Carrigan's managed to convert in the end. Oh, head of Frozen spotted. It doesn't seem like they're really slowing down. Look at the pace on this. Yeah, this is a very quick round. There's one minute 23 still on the clock and the bomb's down. Yeah, normally you see teams get down secret quick from yard. Well, they've just gone ramp straight towards lower, taking the fight to Mouse, and I think they've taken the game out of their hands. It will just be Chris J trying to hold on to this scout, but you can just see how fast and furious that was. It was four Mac 10s and the AK-47, and with that, they took all the liberties they wanted. This is 13 now. Mouse will have to take a save. They have no options. They can't buy. They don't have enough money to do so. They're going to get the 2,400 loss bonus. Chris J is going to get to hold on to that scout. Nobody will be able to chase him down. They're all too far away. But, I mean, this was what I was framing to be a very quick end to nuke if G2 can maintain this pace through not only what will be the Anti-Eco, it will be the next buy. That would be the one to secure 14 and break the mouse sports spirits even further. I think we'll just see it quick again. <laughs> Technology so, so advanced to the point now where you really can't even trust people's webcams. Nah, you know, I don't think, anybody. I, I, believe it or not, Chad, I don't think that was a real alien. I do. Uh, I've got I've got to go deep like Harry Hugo Harry and Chase into the Chase. alien stuff. I'm going to rewatch Bob it. Lazar tonight on Netflix. Don't you worry about Spinning that one. Spinning Tic Tac, we all know it. 
Fifth Day advancing. He wants a fight here. He's going to get what he wanted. Hunter losing his head. Jax hunting. He's found Rops hiding. Master of Ramp Room this time, but Frozen trying to scavenge in there. AK-47, and it's actually been punished. Break. Yeah, Carrigan, look at the timing on this one. He has a chance to really put the thumb screws onto Nexus lobby push. And just like that, he slipped away. Carrigan's got a sneaking suspicion, though. Oh, Lord. Kenny may not be anticipating this at all. Yeah, he'll get that frag and even maybe onto Nexa. Carrigan is so switched on. He's got himself the bomb and a chance to win the round now exclusively off the back of these two frags. I don't think it's enough. You don't? Nico's coming in from main. Bemis had, would have to catch the timing. They're going back to address the top site take. Jax actually can pick up the bomb here and go lower with this. There's so much time. Oh, he's caught a oh timing on Nico as well. Carrigan with no armor. One bullet would do it, Jax. Truly, one. Could finish the job. 45 seconds as the bomb is retrieved. Bemis has even grabbed himself an AK-47, trying to fake the steps. If he cuts noise, the chances are he isolates two 1v1s, and he has. Bemis will have to descend to respect the potential for ramp. Carrigan hoping to push for info lobby. This is perfect. Jax is waiting for this exact push. But Carrigan, will he be checked? Jax, how smart are you? He's outplaying himself here. He wasted all that time, oh. and he's not even going back towards top. I thought it was the top take. Yeah, cut noise, go top. Carrigan's about to clear this. He has to go lower now. Yeah, and Bemis is ready to receive him. Doors open. Doesn't get worse than that for Jax. He's got a MAC-10 versus an AK, and he's even pulled out the bomb. What? Getting away with that. A fake plant. Trying to catch the shots. Five seconds. He doesn't even get the plant. Well, it's not a pretty end to the uh, clutch, but it's a gorgeous start from Carrigan. Yeah, I have to give him credit for that. I felt in the 2v2, there was so much time to work with there from G2 that they should have been able to pull that together, especially with Nico being alive. But Carrigan... He doesn't want to give this one up just yet. It was Chris J to kick it off with the safe scout. It was Carrigan to finish it off with the CZ. And then it was Jax outplaying himself. It looked good. And then it quickly dissipated for poor Jackie boy as it will now be 13 to 5. Mouse sports are going to buy. So are G2. Orp out for Kenny. The same for Chris J. We're into the full buys. Round number 19. Every round is on a knife's edge for Mouse sports. They don't have the economy right now to go down and they're punishing Rops is in yard. He's out of position. That's cocky, Jackson. He's not going to be punished. Jax actually meets his demise. Kenny looking for the repeat onto Frozen. Nico will challenge as well. And the trades keep going. God, yard control is a battle of bloodshed. Nexus got himself out vents. And with the earlier frags, perhaps Bemis a little unprepared for the take of Nexa. He's walked up to the squeaky side. Two from main. Carrigan's on low sight. Rocks is... Oh, what is that? Oh, what a spray. Bemis takes two heads in a matter of seconds. And just like that, Nexus left in a dire straight. I thought we had a slow 3v3 established. Bemis doesn't even drop a bead of sweat. And that's the finish from Rops. Here we go. Mousebot starting to do some convincing. Recovering on AWP as well. Maybe there's more to be said. Okay, well now G2. They're the ones who have to stomach Ouch, an eco. dude. I was talking about the anti-eco, of course, one out by Carrigan, yeah. but now they've even managed to win this one. The gunny. This is a big gun round to win as well. That <laughs> brawl towards Yard could have slipped quickly out of their hands. Now, Chad, obviously hindsight's 2020, and I'm not a gamer in any way, shape, or form compared to them, but was that bad spacing coming into main? Uh, I didn't hate it because they were overlapping as they were trying to take territory. Uh, didn't want to give away a pick towards heaven. Just and Bemis I, being a baller. Yeah, I, look, most players, they get one, and that's it. The space is taken. The fact he gets both, that's insane. That's the dream. And yeah, it is actually pure eco, aside from a $1,400 investment into two sidearms. Kenny fancies his chances. Deagle v. Orp. We might get to see that battle if he keeps looking in towards Chris J's domain, but he won't be able to take that fight from the red container. I'm kind of watching this round with through my fingers here because it could be one of those G2 specials where the Deagles start to land. And thank God I can peel my fingers away now because Chris J's been able to deal with Kenny. That's one Deagle dropped. Still, Nico and Jax wielding those bad boys. <sighs> Nearly got to just in time. It's been a constant battle between Rops and Jax on ramp throughout both halves. Yeah, and uh, both players with a bit of an affinity there. Different styles of holding that key area of the map. Jax is almost a master of the off angles there. People will have seen these highlights with the auto shotgun time and time again. Yeah, that second where you think, okay, not going to be there. And is an inch deeper on the your clear. Props is doing something similar, actually. This is kind of the, uh, a good example of what Jax is up to usually. Frozen has caught Hunter, so these clocks and Deagles will just find themselves the one, maybe a second, as Chris J's orb fires off a shot. Nico's been spotted. They're going to assume he's dropped, and well, he has. Repeeks in, hoping Bemis gives him a little jiggle. I like it. 
<laughs> it's not far off. Go on, Nico. Challenging out of the orb, and Chris J collects his double. So, Mouse Sports. They win it. They win it cleanly. There's the one casualty in Rops. They'll be able to put a new weapon in his grasp, and we're ready to see what G2's AKs Ooh. can do. An early double AWP from Rops. That is very, ah. very interesting. And some of the reasons that this may come back to bite mouse spots in the ass is if territory is taken quickly, and it was quite clear from G2 that those Antiquas, they wanted to play fast, they might be able to play the gun rounds in similar fashion. I can see that there has already been a MAC-10 purchased in by that of G2, which is an indication of potentially a faster round. And if they take the space, if they go very, very quick back towards ramp, Rops could be in trouble. He's already dropped lower. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, it was Chris that went lower. He's holding ramp. And he's actually got two finally taken down. Kenny will upgrade. Can he get away? Just okay. Interesting. Rops has justified the AWP though, and Chris is about to find more with his. Go on, close quarters as well. The barrel's so visible, and Chris pulls the trigger. Oh, oh. Nearly, nearly the flawless round, a hop and a shot. Jax to clutch, frozen in the off angle. Good adjustment from Jax. Maybe he's got something to say about this. A smoke as well, likely decon. Now, Bomb on his back. Previously overthought his uh, situation in the 1v2. Let's see if he can kind of get a bit more clarity of mind on this one. No one has lower sight info. Bemis is in lobby. Carrigan is waiting on the doors. He doesn't have info on the walk down, so they will stay static. Wide open yard. Starting to piece together how he plans to finish this one off. Having the bomb is a fantastic power play no longer can it be guarded by the cts he's actually opting for a full secret walk down so that might surprise carrigan i don't know what angle he's opted for now and pff, well he's never surprised his carrigan it couldn't really be better if he goes decon with gaming Bemis will rotate late jacks he's just gonna walk straight into carrigan here 24 seconds carrigan's looked away pivots decon doesn't have a smoke Carrigan's uncertain as to how this one ends. Jax, you could pivot up the vents if you fancy it. Beamer's holding that, though. 12 seconds. Jax has run down this clock. You might think he's saving. It's so late. Yeah, the door's open, and Carrigan likely will be able to stop this plant. Three, two, one. After time would be even better. Oh, Jax. Beamer's coming down the vent. Oh, Jax, mate. He's down to 3150. They can't afford to drop him a rifle. Everyone has to fend for themselves. So Jax, just that decision to not go down, to, to try and survive that instinct that's hammered into all of us. Fight or flight. He opted for flight and he's been punished. This was great from Chris. I wish this third hit just for the style points. Yeah, it looked what? really cool. Quick little hop around there. <laughs> uh, I really am not liking seeing Jax in these clutches. So if it's him as the last alive in a couple more of these situations, it starts to get... Harder and harder for G2, and they will take a timeout just to discuss their options because this is going to be four on the trot for Mouse Sports. They get two more. Well, they're back in the conversation for map number three, and you can see how map one and two went. Mouse Sports picked Inferno. G2 stole that 16 12, and the same thing happened on Dust 2. Mouse Sports, with a big performance from their own game leader in Carrigan, are able to net the map pick of G2, and that's why we're here on Nuke. That's why we're seeing this one go all the way. And Frozen had a very, very rough first half. I think he was sitting at 0 and 10. He's only got five kills to the good right now. If he comes alive, if he can start giving out some impact for Mouse Sports and a few of those signature clutches, then they're truly back in this game. But it will just be the partial investment from G2, wanting to make sure they level out the money here. Everybody buying down to just around that 2K mark. Kenny keeping a little bit more for the AWP, but they can still be deadly on this. They've got enough utility for a top hit. Plenty of smokes, plenty of mollies. Flashes are good too. And one misstep from Mouse, that's all it's going to take. Crucial. You need to convert this ideally cleanly. G2 are going to do everything within their power to make it as difficult as possible. Outside smoke's being lined up. Hunter for the close smoke. Jax for one of the two on red. Doing a different lineup. Frozen's in warehouse, so he has the main info. Kenny going to try and get on the roof with his util? The smoke's bloom. You'd think it would. Warehouse smoked off. Frozen reveals that he was hanging out there. And while smoked off, he's just looking to confirm any sort of damage he can. Okay, well, that's the bomb towards yards. So there's two options here. One, they can get across towards secret, but not if they wait out these smokes. Second is they could try and pivot in through top side through main. I think going around towards ladder with 40 seconds left is probably not on the agenda as a top fake is being set up. Lots of utility thrown in. They're going to cross dry towards secret, I think. Yeah, and it actually might be enough to deter Frozen's gaze. Yeah, no one was looking. Rops. That one's lower. Chris, oh, damn. Kenny's been spotted. That might be enough to foil the plans. Rops is sprinting to 
confirmed that it is going to be lower. He can hear the steps and he's in a prime position. Will he get checked? Jax. Oh, and Chris J. Rops has managed to find all the frags necessary. Kenny with one. They need to find Chris, though. It's hard with the Tech 9. He's so low and he's getting pushed even more so. Frozen's got util. Frozen's got everything he needs. We do see nine. Mouse Sports defending a storm. It was only against the half by. We will see another test in a bigger one from G2 now. What could be bought up by Kenny? He has the cash. Yeah, they were given a lot of space towards Yard then. I wonder if Mouse will go for another passive setup. They like to play Chris in rotation with that org. Quite the good gun for defending the lower side if they do lose secret control. But Frozen is still a pressure point. Only six kills now. Did find one in the previous. Orp is out. Nico back towards Yard. Nexa, where are you going, my friend? Over towards Squeaky. So maybe going for an early pick or just to listen in. Molly will dissuade him within the early stages. Look at Nico. Yeah, we saw Lecro going for something similar on the Lurk Smoke. You get like a nice little one way on some of those angles. Chris is going towards Secret, so there's a timer on this. Nico will get eventually found out. Unless he has a teammate yeah, to hold it. He's actually going to be doing all the jobs himself. An elevated position on red. That could catch Chris off guard. I wonder if it will. Yikes. Oh. Gets tagged. One into the legs. A quick flick from Chris puts Nico on notice. And this has stalled G2 out. You can see that they don't really have a huge amount of lobby presence right now. The majority of their task force out towards Yard, ready to set up the utility. Molotov towards Secret. That'll hold Chris back, but he can always re-peak late. And his, if there's not too much follow-through behind this, he'll get all the information he desires. Oblock smokes are up. Three behind this. Bomb towards Lobby. It's like the reverse of what we just saw. Smokes and, lobby pre and, and Yard presence, but the bomb elsewhere. It was the stark opposite before, and yeah, they are slipping three players down. Crystal has a smoke. There's only 40 seconds left. And why is the bomb crossing last? Jack's a bit sketchy, but gets across without being spotted. So the plan is not ruined just yet. Chris has got a perfect line. And Nico's just walked straight into it. So backing away, procedural orping here, and might have to back away even further. Yeah, he suspects with 25 seconds left, they will have pace to this. Next up, trying to find one. Oh my Chris, God! It's some ballsy stuff. It's actually fed them the frags. Now Rops, frozen yet to frag. It's only Rops now. So low, being pressured from everywhere. Where's the bomb? Jax needs to get it down. 10 seconds, they're scaring me. Get it down there. Hunter to hold it. Bomb going down with one second to spare. G2 made a bit of a meal of that. That could have gone awry if Rops had found something. Now I don't fancy his chances. He'd be dropping into Hunter. Go on. No scope. Oh, just a little wide. But that's you two finding 14. Chad, do you want to try and put your brain together after that one? I'm almost pulling my hair out and I'm not even in the server. What the hell is They've going got on? got lower. Why is the bomb squeak? There's so much back and forth there. I think because Nexa just went into top and peeled the heads of mouse ports apart. They went, yeah, top's clear. Well, lower was clear too. Everywhere felt clear because once they were able to overwhelm Chris, who almost had some crazy collateral over towards Decon, they felt like there were so many players. It was like the whole G2 team in that bloody door. Yeah. He hits one shot there, could be a completely different round. Yeah, just a crazy nose go through the door. You get two names in the feed. Bob's your uncle. Chris has won them the round, but that does give G2 a little bit of confidence. They haven't seen a G2T round since the second of this half. So that's uh, the five round slew of mouse sports stopped. Let's see if they can build upon it. That was good impact from next there. He's towards the bottom of the fragging chart for his team. So just walking into top, I believe it was, able to destroy the Mouseport's defense, probably scattering once Chris had called so many players lower. Next now up to 12 kills and impact kills. It's one way to put it as the buy is back out. This is basically last chance to learn here for Mouse. They lose this, they're operating with very little going into what may be the last round of play. Utility, a little bit skimped. Hang on, Chris is going for some... Yard aggression. He's actually tucked into secret instead. That's mean he has the info on the red walk up. Smoke deployed. Hunter throwing that out in partnership with the locker's smoke. Flash for the first peak. Chris wants to call red clear and he can. So those smokes don't hold the info. They was supposed to, and wow, smoking off hut, but he hits the wall bang. Can he just bang Carrigan on the top site? Oh dear, they can go lower. They're trying the vents. They're dropping down. There isn't a single CT down there. Naturally, you'd expect. Okay, Kenny, you've got a job now. It's a big I'm one. Still top. Oh, so they've dropped two players lower. They've just oh. completely stalled out here. Nexa and Hunter are fortifying the lower site. 
Um, Chris J's clearing yard. This is very confusing stuff. Jax could go through ramp towards the lower bomb site right now, as we can see. Bemis has a chance to catch them in transition, but he's too little too late. If he gets a move on, he's hearing these footsteps. He'll call this. Chris needs to dip back down towards the lower site. Going ramp. They're going deep. Are they just going to save? Like, if the bomb goes down, it's a 5-on-3 lower retake. Oh, Nico. A little late to react oh, there. Could have been looking at his radar. Yeah, I think so. But he does put it back together in time to find the necessary headshots. So G2 are looking at match point. Yikes. Should the bomb explode? It's been a very kooky few rounds. Chad, yeah. the fact that you're grimacing and frowning as it unfolds, I'm sure the teams are doing the same. They're just losing each other and not really having too much follow through. But G2 stalling out there. It has worked in their favor. There's always just a moment where it could go wrong, where right. they group up with three men, they walk into a CT, they get sprayed down because Rops was still alive, right? That's kind so of they what were we hoping... saw on Dust 2, right? The amount yeah. of time the bomb was lost due to something from Carrigan. You saw it even on his lobby push with the CZ-75. It can really destabilize some of those G2 setups. Mouse have had to work really hard for their rounds, whereas G2 and something like this, they, it's not that they are gifted it, but they get the opening two kills, and it's basically one at that point because Mouse Sports are stuck in the wrong positions. Well, they're stuck in a hellscape at this point. I mean, I'm seeing 2.3 for Carrigan and 2.4 for Frozen. Chris can drop one. Yeah, I think uh, Frozen will be the one who gets that. Yeah. So this was Nexa and Nico finding a couple of frags. If that's the uh, attempt at a radar glimpse. <laughs> really lucky to know we got away with that one there, Nico. But yeah, the shot through the hut onto Carrigan. We didn't catch it, but that's the opening kill and one that should probably never go down. That's just luck of the draw there. Kenny takes a shot. Carrigan strafes into it at the wrong time. And Mouse Sports haven't cracked the double digits and it doesn't look likely here. Rops hasn't had one of his phenomenal showings. Been kept on us, 16 kills. Been kept on us throughout the series. Carrigan back onto that CZ-75. Maybe he can make another miracle happen. There has been plenty of them so far. Crochet with the AWP. This is the time where he steps up with some impact as well. Nico netting open the door. Indication of top play, but it's fast ramp. Yes, and Rops has lost his duel. That's it. Yeah, that's a fast pace to G2. They're looking fierce with intent towards the lower side. Bemis is going to give Decon a good go. This is a perfect frag onto Nico. Finishes off the low HP. And actually, he's dropped a smoke that may destabilize the rest of this plant. They've actually dropped one similarly. The wallbank's not coming in. And Hunter, regardless of his presence, is still punching in the digit. Bemis can spray him. He hasn't gone for it. He is going to catch Jax with a nice little lineup and spray. So they have a numbers advantage for this retake. And this is a retake for survival. Throws in a perfect molly if he no oh, exposes himself to Kenny. Looks like G2 have done it. Wait, there is a kick. Carrigan has one. Three to retake. They have the time. They're coming in from Decon. A bit of chaos in a smoke could be the end of it, especially if Hunter gets sprayed. Shots are missed. Beamer's desperately trying to adjust his spray. Hunter needs one, and he's gone down. Oh, but they line up for Kenny. A quad kill. Collateral.